So you meet a guy, you guys exchange numbers, you guys are communicating maybe by phone, probably by text. Everything seems to be going well, and all of a sudden, he stops responding. And you're like, what the hell is going on? Well, I'm gonna explain to you what's going on and what you need to do when he stopped texting you. Before we get started, as always, be sure to share this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification button so you can be alerted every time I go live or drop a new video and so you can get caught up on everything I have for you. All right, so anyways, let's get to the topic at hand. Again, a lot of women have dealt with ghosting and it's an unfortunate situation, it sucks, all right? And the reality is that it's happening a lot more than it should nowadays. But it can be very confusing when that happens to you as well as hurtful and a lot, of, a lot of you may not understand what you need to do, what's the best course of action in situations, most specifically when that man stopped texting you. It can be various reasons why this man all of a sudden stopped. It's not always something hugely negative. It could be something tragic happened in his life and he shut down. It could be a loss of interest. It could be he took his interest elsewhere. Um, it could be that he wasn't sure how interested you were. And I'm going to get a little bit more into that as we go along in this video. Again, there's various reasons, but I want to get more into, okay, you understanding what needs to happen when the text stops, when he no longer is replying. Now, I know many of you might be thinking, well, what, is that, what else is there to do other than cut his ass off? <laughs> like, I get it. I understand. But that's really not what you should be doing. At least that's not the first step. So let me break it down for you. So number one, and I kind of just mentioned it, when he stops texting, don't be so quick to automatically cut him off. Now, again, I know that can be difficult because the knee-jerk reaction is, okay, he's no longer communicating, F him, he's not serious, it's done, all right? And I'm sure a lot of friends and maybe even family will tell you, let his behind go. But as I alluded to earlier, there could be a very uh, a variety of possible reasons why this happened. And it's not always a, 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 an example of him not being serious or having real interest in you. As, as difficult as that might seem to believe, that is the case in some situations. So I think what's important for you as a woman is that to take a step back and before you just react to uh, his lack of response, we need to go over a few things and evaluate what's going on. So the next step in this process is evaluating the whole situation. So here's what I mean by that. Number one, if, if him not responding anymore is uh, another example or another symptom of what has already been maybe uh, uh, lazy laziness in his communication, what has already been an extension of other toxic, unhealthy, or undesirable behavior, if he's just pretty much piling on more crap to the situation, and this is the last straw, then, then yes, go ahead and cut him off. Because clearly this man is just not invested in trying to build a healthy relationship. But let's say when you actually take a step back and look at the entire situation, there really is nothing else wrong other than this moment right here, or this few days or week, whatever, that now you have not heard back from this guy. It, it is, in my opinion, best to say, okay, let's dig deeper. Because if, if he has been on point in every other way, then there's a greater chance that this may be an outlier, that this may be a mistake somewhere, something went wrong, um, it may not have been intentional, and even though, again, this may sound far-fetched for some people, it could be as simple as the man losing his phone. This has happened. Let, let, let it be understood and let it be known. I have sat down with individuals who, yes, losing a phone, losing a number, losing the information on their phone, that can happen to people, all right? Um, again, some people get sidetracked with life and, and they lose sight of what they need to be doing. And you may say, well, if, how can you lose sight of a woman you're trying to date if you're serious about her? Listen, when we first meet each other and we first start to engage, sometimes we have not fully developed an understanding of 
what we want here or where we're headed here, depending on how early in the dating process we are. So it is possible for an individual to lose sight of what they need to be doing in this current dating situation, all right? That isn't to excuse it or act like this is acceptable behavior moving forward. But again, when we're evaluating the whole situation and we can honestly say this man has been on point, all right, so far, then he at least should be given the benefit of the doubt, all right? And we should not jump to negative conclusions the minute we see a red flag. And, and if you've been following me and watching my videos and you know I consistently say we don't see red flags and then run. We see red flags and we address them. If they're not corrected, then we let their ass go, okay? That's the way we need to approach it. All right, so now this brings me to the next step in this process of what to do when he stopped texting. So two parts, it needs to be addressed and we need not dance around the issue. So let me first say this real quick. A lot of women will come to me and say, oh my gosh, I was dating the guy, everything was going great, and then he ghosted me. And I'm like, what do you mean? What happened exactly? Oh, I haven't heard from him for the past five days. He hasn't called or text. And my response is, <laughs> have you called and texted him? And it is silence. And, and, and it's like, well, he, he should be calling texting me. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is it only on him to reach out to you? Now, again, you might say, well, that's the man's role. If he's serious, I get it. But let me tell you what I have seen happen in many situations. And I mentioned earlier about sometimes he's questioning how serious you are. I have seen situations where men felt like they were the ones always initiating contact. They were calling, they were texting, they were trying to go out. And to a lot of you women, you may feel like this is absolutely normal, why not? He should be pursuing the woman. But this man wants to see uh, reciprocity. He wants to see that you are as, you are as interested in him as he is in you, that you are as invested in him as he is in you. If he's not seeing that, yes, there are men who may take a step back and say, okay, let me see if she hits me up if I stop. Is it always going to be on me, all right? And so I'm not saying it's right or healthy for that man to test you in that way, but I do understand why he does it. I do understand uh, the concern he has in that moment, and again, it's not coming from a place of he's not interested or not serious. It's coming from a place of him trying to protect himself to make sure you're serious about him. And so when you can say this man has ghosted you and hasn't reached out for the past five days, but you cannot come back to me and say you've made any attempt in those five days to reach out to him, then you are, what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't want to say wrong, but, but you cannot just put all the wrong on him. You cannot just make this about him not reaching out. You have to check yourself, especially, again, depending on how has this dynamic been up to this point. Has it been a mutual effort or a one-sided pursuit? And this is why I, I preach so much about it, no one should be chasing each other. It's about two people pouring into each other because we are grown adults. And as grown adults, many people have already been through situations that they have been played, they have been used, they have been led, to, led on by individuals. And so people want to be safe in making sure both sides are seriously interested. So it's important that both men and women put their best foot forward and put forth an effort of showing interest, desire, and effort. Because without that, you will start to, you will become the red flag. And now he will question, okay, this woman's not serious. So going back to, it needs to be addressed and don't dance around the issue. So in it, it, it needs to be addressed, reach out one more time. Whether that be a phone call, whether it be a text. But again, I said, don't dance around the issue. Don't reach out and act like nothing ever happened. All right? Don't reach out with some stupid random text or random call trying to just see how he's going to react. No, no, no. Hit him with, hey, I haven't heard from you. What's going on? You know, hey, I haven't heard from you. I want to make sure, are we still trying to uh, get to know each other here? Now, I know that might be difficult for a lot of women 
all right? And you may feel like it's not your place to have to do that. But you're either going to focus on pride or you're going to focus on progress, all right? And there's multiple reasons why you should be focused on progress because progress isn't simply about you two being able to reconcile and move forward because I will acknowledge that yes, this may be a situation where this man is flaky, not serious, has moved on, right? But progress in the sense of resolution, by you reaching out, you're going to be able to now have some more clarity. It may not be full closure because let's say you reach out and he still doesn't respond. So you may not get full closure in the sense of him responding and telling you what it is, but you will gain the additional clarity to have a greater chance of finding peace with the situation and being able to move on, or you will be able to uh, address the issue with him and have a conversation, which will allow you guys to now come back together and actually make things work going forward. So either way, you are better off by addressing it than by sitting back and just acting like it doesn't bother you because it does. It does. And that's human nature. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know any man or woman who's dating someone feels like things are going well. This person disappears on them and they're just like, oh, well, it's like, I'm not saying it never happens. Some of you may, may have grown that thick of a skin, but most people are going to have a little bit of an impact from that. And that's okay. But it's better for you to address it and again, not dance around the issue so that we can at least have a chance at clarity or a chance at reconciliation. But either way, we will have progress. Do not let pride get in the way. All right, so now the next thing is, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you were able to uh, re-engage a conversation with this man, whether it be by text or by phone. Now, at this point, I'll be honest with you, even if you get a response by text, I would suggest shifting the conversation to phone. Uh, I think text is very easy to get sidetracked. It can become frustrating trying to have a serious conversation via text. I would not advise it. So I would advise that if you were able to now get back in contact, we shift to a phone conversation. And in that phone conversation, we now, one, discuss the issue, all right? And we also lay out the expectations going forward. Because again, it may be a scenario where he says, you know what, I'm really sorry, I, life got the best of me, so on and so forth. And because, I remind you, because this is a man who has shown you nothing but good, and this has been his first mistake, we give him a chance. And we say, okay, listen, but going forward, we can't do it like this. Going forward, if you disappear on me like that, then just know I'm out. I'm not going to continue this. We make that clear, and, and that's it. We don't have to keep giving chances after that. He had that one time he can mess up, but after that, it's, not, it's no longer a mistake. It's a habit. It, 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 it's part of his nature or his character. It's a symptom of him not being serious enough. But we give him that opportunity by laying out the expectations. We also discuss what expectations are on both sides. Because again, if this man had any reservations about how you were truly feeling about him, and where you stand, and, and he withdrew out of whether protecting himself or trying to see what you would do, then we need to discuss what he also needs from you going forward. So it's about what we need from each other if we're going to establish and build a healthy relationship. The beautiful thing about this is if it is a scenario where there was fear, concern, hesitation, things of that nature, not anything to do with a lack of interest, then this moment can be such a springboard to greater things. Because when we're able to get through these obstacles early on, we're able to have a much smoother uh, relationship going forward. Like I had a, a woman reach out to me, actually in the comment section once, who said she watched one of the videos about not cutting someone off, addressing it first. And it was a scenario where it wasn't that he completely ghosted her, but she was hearing less and less from him. And then when, he, when she talked to him, he actually did express that he wasn't sure how she felt. He felt like she wasn't as interested. She was like, no, I'm sorry, that wasn't the case. They talked about it. They laid out what they needed. And she said to me, this is a true story. She's like, they're better than ever. And now they're in an official relationship and she has never been happier, all right? I'm not just making this stuff up. It's real. Now, again, I will remind you, yes, I know a lot of these situations won't turn out that way. 
I know that this him disappearing or not texting could just be he is no longer interested. But we don't want to jump to negative conclusions. And I remind you, we don't do that when the man has been nothing but good so far. All right. That's a reason to give him the opportunity or to, to give both of you the opportunity to see if this can be corrected. So, again, discuss the expectations, lay out how we handle things going forward. If we're going through something, we maybe we agree on, OK, even if you don't feel like talking for the next few days because something happened, you have to give each other the respect of, hey, I'm going through something right now. Give me a few days. At simply acknowledging the person, giving them a heads up, that can be enough until we learn how to get more comfortable with each other. And I want to mention that because I, I, it's just hitting me and I feel the need to speak on it. We have to understand, especially when it comes to people dealing with issues in their life, when we're dating, even if that person really likes you and is seriously interested in you, they may not have gotten to a place where they feel safe opening up completely to you. All right. They may be still trying to navigate that. So we should not take it personal when they shut down like this. Again, it's not to excuse the behavior. They need to correct it. If we're going to move forward, they got to do better. But when it happens, we have to understand that sometimes it's almost like we want this person to be well, the way they should be uh, if we're two, three years in a relationship. And it's like, yo, but we just met. And their ability to open up to you if something happened in their family or I know one situation where a guy, he failed his bar exam, devastated him, and he shut down. Again, was that the right thing to do? No, but he did not know how to face the woman he was dating and talk about his failures, how he was feeling just completely destroyed in that moment. He felt weak, and in that weakness, he was not able to face her. But fortunately, they were able to you know, get it together and, and work the whole thing out. But I'm just telling you, I've seen so many situations that we, we, we tend to take things personally without realizing that people have their, their, there's a growing process in how we deal with each other, how we open up to each other. And depending on how early we are in this dating process, we have to give some grace. All right. And again, it's always based on the, based on the foundation of they've been great overall, but they have this specific struggle. So we talk about it. So now let's get to the, the fifth point, so to speak, all right? And that is, when he stops texting you, do not chase him. Now, some of you might be saying, well, what the hell are you talking about? You just told us <laughs> to, to reach out to this man and, and have discussions. That's not chasing, all right? Addressing, make, making an attempt to reach out, those are healthy behaviors. That's a healthy approach to the situation. But what I do not want you to do is send this man five texts in a row, he's still not responding to you. Blowing his phone up, he's still not responding to you. Stopping his social media, all right, to see what's going on. Do not get consumed by this and do not start to chase the man. I'm all for giving people the opportunity to correct situation, but I am not for telling you or any person to put yourself in this situation where you have to chase, 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 chase. Because even if you get him through chasing after him, you've now set the stage for a very unhealthy relationship, all right? You should not have to chase, but you should express how you feel. You should reach out. You should have a discussion when it is possible, all right? But do not chase. Now, with the whole social media thing, I just want to shed a little bit more light on that. Listen, I know it can be very tempting we, when we don't hear from someone anymore to go check, well, have they been active on social media? Why the hell are they posting that story and they ain't answering my phone call? You know what I'm saying? They don't post three times and I've yet to get a text back. And listen, I get it. And, and I don't know if anyone is going to completely stop themselves from at least checking. But if you check and you now see clear evidence that this person is ignoring you, ghosting you, is just not serious, all right, just kill it and leave it there. But don't keep watching. Don't keep stalking. Don't now get so pissed off that you now, it starts to ruin your day, your week, and it starts to pour over into other aspects of your life. It's unfortunate. It sucks, all right? But sometimes you got to take it as a blessing because if they're that inconsiderate, it was never going to work with them anyway. If they're that inconsiderate, you were never going to be happy with this individual. So guess what? Thank God. 
Thank God they're gone. I wish you would have done it in a better way, but thank God they are out the way. Which now brings me to number six, and it kind of goes hand in hand. Do not dwell on the situation, all right? So in situations where these men stop texting, and I say these men, that man, because not every man is going to stop texting, okay? Well, when that man, if that ever happens to you or has happened to you, stops texting, do not dwell on it. And this is why, going back to the earlier point about addressing it and not dancing around it, this is one of the reasons why that's so important. Because what I have found is that when we don't get to speak our piece or when we don't get to ask the question we want to ask or when we don't reach out that one last time, it can cause things to linger within us. It could cause us to say, well, damn, maybe I should have done this. I mean, because no matter how tough we want to be on the surface, no matter how much we're saying F them, sometimes, sometimes there's a part of us that feels like, well, maybe I could have tried something different because we may have really liked them. So, but I don't want you to dwell on it. And that's why addressing it, not dancing around it, that helps to do that. Uh, as well as just simply accepting, okay, this person was not for me. And that's very important for you to, to really come to terms with when this happened. Sometimes, or a lot of times, if not all the time, not all the time, because again, some situations, there are special circumstances. But a lot of situations, we have to just accept this was not the person for us. They were never going to be the person for us. Whether they responded or not, they just not it. And so when we can accept that, it can help us to not dwell and let this linger on. We got to find our peace. We got to just pray and say, you know what? Give it to God. It didn't work out. Let me keep moving forward. Because what happens to a lot of people is they, they either dwell on it to where that dwelling can, again, make you miserable. It can block you from your blessings in your life. All right. Or even if you don't dwell, sometimes we internalize and now we carry that negative experience onto the new situation. And now we become more on edge with this new person. Now we may have a shorter leash, undeservingly to that new individual, but we're, we're, our tolerance is lower now in a bad way because of what we just went through. So we gotta make sure that we don't dwell and we don't carry that baggage into any other situation, all right? If he stopped texting, he's not it. It's not working. You did your part. You reached out. We, you did everything I mentioned in this video. That's it. Wash your hands. Let it go. Move forward. You, you will move on to bigger and better things. All right. And now we're going to get to this last point. But before I give you the last point, please check out He's Lying Sis. Now, listen. I know the book says He's Lying Sis. It doesn't mean every man is lying. <laughs> it don't mean the man who stopped texting is going to lie to you. But it does break down a lot of scenarios that a lot of women have gone through, um, give you some clarity, it may give you some confirmation. Either way, it's helping a lot of women. Click the link below in the description or in the comment section or go to he'slyingsis.com. Get your copy, all right? And so now, the last point, and that is do not sell yourself short, all right? So it's important that you understand what you deserve, and what you need to have a happy and healthy relationship. And you do not sell yourself short for some man who wants to give you nothing but excuses, but some man who's not serious enough about trying to find, at the very least, a compromise to make sure you are both getting what you need. So if you face this situation, and let's just say he does respond, all right? And he gives you this excuse, all right? And again, I say excuse just for this specific example. He says, oh, you know, I don't know, I, work was a busy. And I'm saying not that work can't have been gotten busy for him, but let's just say it was a flat out excuse, it's a cop out. But you let him back in and now he continues with bad behavior. Again, I, I'm not here for you to be getting less than you deserve. I'm not here to encourage you to settle in situations. I want you to address things, but I want you to make it clear to that man what you need. If he's not going to step up to the plate, you let him go, all right? As well as you don't, you don't allow yourself to accept this negative behavior if he's unwilling to correct it because you're lonely, because you're tired of starting all over, because you don't want to have to... Um, get with someone else. Like maybe you just really like this guy. You convinced yourself that you want him. 
But listen, if he's not going to give you what you need and deserve, you don't belong there. And so it's not just about whether he he uh, gives you an excuse after you reach out to him. Hell, even before we get to the point of him not texting you back. Now, maybe he texts you back, but he takes 10 hours every single time. And you know it's bothering you. You know it doesn't work for you. Why are you accepting that? Again, address it. And if he's unwilling to correct it, why are you accepting that? All right? If it's okay, he's willing to text you, but he never wants to get on the phone. He never wants to have real conversation. Why are you accepting that? Okay, maybe he texts and calls, but he never takes you out. He doesn't want to go anywhere. And the only time he wants to link up is for you to come to his house so that y'all can Netflix and chill or whatever else grown folk going to do when it's get together late at night, all right? That's y'all business. But the point is, why are you accepting less than what you know you need, desire, and deserve? And so I do not want you to sell yourself short, whether that be a lack of responding to a text, whether that be mistreatment in any aspect of the relationship, you've got to hold to your standard. But again, it's not just about what you're getting, it's about what you're giving. I think it's very important for every one of you listening to this to understand as a woman, a lot of women are, are selling themselves short by not being their true selves and being and giving of their true selves in the dating process. And that doesn't allow the man to connect with the real you. That doesn't allow the man to feel needed, or not needed, desired and wanted as well. As I mentioned earlier, he wants to feel like you are as interested in him as he is in you. So you want to make sure that through all of this, you are doing your part. Dating can't just be about evaluating only him. It has to be about evaluating yourself as well. Are you putting your best foot forward? Are you being open and honest? Are you communicating as you should, all right? Are you making sure that you discuss things before you just react or fly off the handle? It's important for you to understand that you need to do things in the best way possible on your end, but yes, hold him to a standard too. And the beautiful thing is when you're coming correct, he has no excuse not to come correct on his side. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. I know what you're thinking. Some men are just absolutely ridiculous, right? You, you go out with them, things seem cool, and next thing you know, they're gone. They disappear. And you're like, what the hell just happened? Well, I'm going to explain.